gas exchange in smoking. Stentors, also known as animacules, are invertebrates. On average, they are 2 mm in length, making them invisible to our eyes. They do not need gaseous exchange system because their body is not large enough. Living things need energy to build, maintain, and repair body structures, and also for activities such as metabolism, excretion, and movement. In larger animals, most, if not all, of their cells are too far from the surface of the body to receive enough oxygen by diffusion alone. In addition, many of these animals have developed an external surface that provides protection for the body. This is true of watertight outer coverings and tough or hardened skins like in reptiles. Those outer surfaces are no longer suitable for gas exchange and the organism requires an alternative respiratory surface. Active organisms have an increased metabolic rate too, and the demand for oxygen in their cells is higher than in slow-moving or in active organisms. So we find that, for many reasons, larger active animals have specialized organs for gas exchange. The human gas exchange system, also known as the respiratory system, has several adaptations. One, it cleans and warms the air that enters during breathing. Number two, it maximizes the surface area for diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood and the atmosphere. Number three, it minimizes the distance for this diffusion. And number four, maintain adequate gradient for this diffusion. Gross structure of the respiratory system The gas exchange system is made up of several parts, including the nasal cavity and the buccal cavity, which is not found in this image. Air then goes to the trachea, then divides into two primary bronchi, out to each of the lung. One for the left, one for the right. These continues into smaller bronchi and further divides into smaller tubes called as the bronchioles and then the air sacs which we call as alveoli. The lungs are pyramid shaped and are paired organs that are connected to the trachea by the right and left bronchi. It is enclosed in a cavity called pleural cavity to reduce friction between the lungs and ribs during inhalation and exhalation. The diaphragm is a flat, dome-shaped muscle at the base of the lungs and thoracic cavity. Fun fact, vast majority of people have 12 sets of ribs both in the left and right no matter what their sex is. Only some people are born with more or less than an average number. Cells, tissues, and fibers involved in the gas exchange system. We will be talking about six of these. First one. First one, we have cartilage. Cartilage provides strength to the trachea and the bronchus. It holds open the airway so there is little resistance to airflow or to prevent collapsing or bursting due to air pressure changes. In the trachea, the cartilage is C-shaped, but in the bronchus, there is no specific shape. Next one. Ciliated epithelium cells. Do note that epithelium cells in general are cells that are found lining several organs. Ciliated cells are tiny hair-like structure on surface of the cell. The continual movement or beating carries a carpet of mucus upwards towards the larynx at a speed of 1 cm per minute. When mucus reaches top of the trachea, it is usually swallowed so that pathogens are destroyed by stomach acids. So in this image, we have to note that 
we took it from the side of a trachea. But this ciliated epithelium will continue on and on and on until the bronchus or the bronchi. And if we take a closer look, this highlighted area in here will look like this. So these cells in here with this hair-like drawing are the cilia of the ciliated cell. Cilia is the hair-like structure that is found of the ciliated epithelium. The violet blobs that we could see in here is called as the mucus that is secreted by this cell. The hollow passages that go from our nose to our lungs are lined with cells like this that are covered with tiny hairs which sway backward and forward in a layer of mucus. They are the cilia. They sweep out any harmful particles and microorganisms that enter the trachea from the outside. This cell in here is known as the goblet cells. The main function of goblet cells is to secrete mucus. Mucus is sticky and collects particles of dust, spores, and bacteria. Mucus is made up of mucin. Mucin at a substance level is made up of glycoproteins and hence the reason why it is sticky. If we inhale sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, this can dissolve and forms an acidic solution and irritates the lining of the airways. Do note that the goblet cells lend its name from this part in here, which looks like an upside down goblet. Next one, macrophages. This is supposed to be a one word, but it doesn't fit the paper. So please take note of that, that this is one continuous word. Macrophages, as we knew from the previous chapter, patrol the surface scavenging bacteria or fine dust particles. This one can be found in the alveoli or the alveolus. Squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium are lining cells that gives short pathway for the carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange. This one is found in the alveoli as well. Next, smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is a type of involuntary muscle that contracts slowly for long periods of time. When this contracts, it reduces the diameter of the tubes. During exercise, the smooth muscle relaxes, therefore increasing the diameter of the tubes and increases the intake of air. And lastly, elastic fibers. Elastic fibers allow alveoli and airways to expand and recoil when breathing out to reduce the volume of alveoli. Elastic fibers allow alveoli and airways to expand. This also helps when this alveoli recoils when breathing out to reduce the volume of alveoli and expel air out of the lungs.